Kia ora and welcome. My name is Nick and in this video I'm going to introduce you to OWASP Juice Shop. OWASP Juice Shop is an example web application which has been built with some intentional bugs in it, some security bugs. The challenge for you is to discover as many, as many of these bugs as you can and in the process learn how you might detect similar bugs in your own applications. Um, I was going to be giving a talk at OWASP Wellington about how to store your users' passwords, um, but given recent events and everyone being in lockdown, I figured it would be fun to find a hands-on way of learning about security, um, maybe something a bit more fun. Um, but if you do want to check out that talk, I gave it at the OWASP conference in February, and I'll put a link to the slides uh, in the notes below. So OWASP Juice Shop, OWASP is um, the Open Web Application Security Project. They have a lot of projects. One of them is OWASP Juice Shop. It's completely free. It's easy to run. It's pretty fun. I use it a lot when I give developer training in my day job. Um, before we have a look at that, I will just quickly show us what the OWASP Top 10 are. So the OWASP top 10, if you haven't heard of them, is um, 10 really common web application security risks. So we're talking things like SQL injection, uh, broken authentication, sensitive data exposure. Uh, these are the top 10 things that the industry has kind of agreed on as being uh, both bad and really common. Um, and OWASP Juice Shop has been designed around the OWASP Top 10 so that you can see how these kind of play out in a real life example web application. If you want to get started um, really fast, the way to do that is just to Google OWASP Juice Shop. And on this page, you can see a link on the right to an online demo. So you can just open that in a new tab. And here we've got Juice Shop. Dot .herokuapp.com gives you a little welcome message so we'll ignore that uh, we'll accept cookies because everyone accepts cookies and here we have the latest version of OWASP Juice Shop running in our browser uh, so this is shared with everyone on the internet um, so some of the challenges have had to be disabled but quite a few of them you can do on your own um, but if you just take a quick look around, you know, you can see you can buy some juice, you can see some reviews. It doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of functionality before you're logged in. You can look at some customer feedback. There's a scoreboard link there. You can search apples. Get some apple juice. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to spin up our own juice shop instance. Um, means we can have a little bit more fun and not worry about what other people on the internet might be doing with this intentionally vulnerable web app. So I'm going to Google OWASP Juice Shop. Second link for me is this GitHub link. That's the one you want to look for, GitHub. GitHub Juice Shop. And if we scroll down here, we get to the README. Um, and there's this purple button here, deploy to Heroku. So this is a free way to deploy it in one click to um, a cloud platform where you'll get your own instance. So we're gonna click on that. If you don't have an account already, you'll need to sign up for a Heroku account. Again, it's free, you just need to give it an email address. Um, you could put dummy data and the rest of it. I already have an account, so I'm going to log in. And this part of the video will magically skip forward. So I have logged in. And the screen that I get presented with is telling me that I'm creating a new Heroku app. I'm going to deploy my own OWASP Juice Shop. It's deploying straight from the master branch on GitHub. You can give it an app name if you want, or you can leave it blank and get one chosen for you. I'm going to leave it blank and click Deploy App. 
So behind the scenes, this is provisioning me uh, some server resources that will run Olus Produce Shop. While we wait for that to complete, we're going to take a look at the OWASP G-Shop book. So if we head over to Google OWASP G-Shop book, and the first result is poning.owaspjuice.shop. Now this book is an excellent companion for those who want a little bit more guidance as, as you start learning how to hack. For people who just want to follow their nose, you don't need this book at all. There's um, nothing, no secrets in it really. Well, there are some secrets, namely the challenge solutions, but you don't want to spoil yourself. Uh, if you do want a bit of help though, the first part of this book is teaching you how to get set up to hack OWASP Juice Shop. I find all that you need is Firefox and knowing how to right click and inspect elements and view the uh, JavaScript console and things like that, the network tab. But you can find a bit more detail here, including also how to walk the happy path. What we often find is when we're looking for security bugs, it's easiest to start by understanding how the app is supposed to work. Then you can get a sense of things that don't feel quite right uh, or business logic that doesn't seem to be implemented the way that it should be. And it can give you an idea of where to poke around when you're trying to find security bugs. Then in the second part of the book, we can see um, the challenges that we can look for and they've been broken down based on um, pretty closely aligned with the OWASP top 10. So for example, we could click on injection and we get a description of what injection is and the challenges that fall under this category. Now these are ranked by difficulty um, from one star through to six uh, six being the hardest. Uh, there's no one star challenges, but both one and two are pretty approachable for beginners, I find. Um, it also points out some challenges won't work on Heroku. You need to run OWASP Juice Shop locally on your local machine or in some kind of VM. Um, there's instructions on the GitHub repo on how to do that. So we can't do all the challenges when we're on Heroku, but we can do quite uh, most of them, really. So you've got injection, broken authentication, sensitive data exposure, etc. So let's head back over to Heroku and see if it's done. Cool. So here we have the app successfully deployed to Heroku. And we can click view and it's going to open it in a new tab for us. Get rid of that one. Because we're on a free Heroku instance, you'll notice that it's a little bit slow, especially if you come back to it, say, a couple days later. Okay, and we see what we saw in the demo. Get this welcome message. Uh, cookies, we can click those. Um, there's this orange uh, hat icon button, help getting started. So this will launch a tutorial. Um, and... That's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to follow the tutorial to get started on some of these initial challenges. When we click that, we get a little clippy guy up here. This application is riddled with security vulnerabilities. Your progress exploiting these is tracked on a scoreboard, but we won't find a link to it in the navigation or the sidebar. Finding the scoreboard is in itself actually one of the hacking challenges. You could start by just guessing the URL of the scoreboard or comb through the client-side JavaScript code for useful information. So that's just uh, playing through text. Um, let's open up the dev tools. So I'm going to go inspect element. And I've got that way zoomed in, so let's zoom that out. So we need to find the JavaScript. The first part of the inspector is showing us the HTML. If we click on debugger, it shows us all the JavaScript. So we've got main, polyfill, runtime, tutorial, vendor. It's a little bit hard to know which one to start with, but 
if the main one has the main code in it, that's a good place to start. There's these two little buttons down here, a little eye icon and a little curly brackets. This curly brackets one will pretty print the source. So we'll click that and it makes it a bit easier to read. We'll get rid of that sidebar. So here we know we're supposed to be looking for a scoreboard. So let's just type in the word score. We see there's a string that's being compared with something. App dash scoreboard. So we could try that. See what happens. Doesn't look like that worked. So we'll keep looking. Path scoreboard. Path search register recycle hacking instructor track result. This looks promising. So we will try and chuck that up there. And there we go. We have successfully solved a challenge. Scoreboard. Find the carefully hidden scoreboard page. You might be wondering why that's a challenge. What you'll often find is developers assume that if people don't know the URL, they can't access the page. So they won't bother putting authentication on something like an admin page. Uh, but it's pretty easy to guess URLs or even poke around in the client side JavaScript to find them. So what we've got here is the scoreboard and it's broken it up so you can search by the challenges by difficulty ranking. So I'm going to click here so we can see the one and two star challenges. We can see that we've solved one of them already, the find the scoreboard page. And quite a few of these have this orange hat icon. And this means we can follow a tutorial for each of these. So I'm going to start with a one star challenge and then after that I'll leave you to your own devices. Um, so this challenge here, perform a DOM based XSS cross site scripting attack with this payload. Um, so go and look at the OWASP top 10 page if you're unfamiliar with what cross-site scripting is. Briefly, it's when your website has a hole in it that allows an attacker to run their own arbitrary JavaScript. And there's lots of bad stuff that can happen when an attacker can run their own JavaScript. So let's click on the tutorial icon here. Now we've got two clippies, that's fun. Uh, so we're looking at this one. For this challenge, we'll take a close look at the search field in the top of the screen. Let's start, start by searching for all products containing OWASP. So we can do that. Click on search. O-W-A-S-P, OWASP. Now hit enter. OK, Clippy. We will do that. If we can get rid of that. Hmm. Nice. You should now see many cool OWASP-related products. You might have noticed that your search term is displayed above the results right here. Thanks, Clippy. We will now try cross-site scripting, which is when we try and inject HTML or JavaScript code into the application. That sounds fun. Change your search value to H1 OWASP. For those who've done a bit of HTML before, you'll know this is a heading tag. No results found. Hmm, this doesn't look normal. Does it? it? Doesn't look too abnormal. Um, but if we right click here and go inspect element, you can see that this has actually been rendered in the HTML as an H1 tag. Um, it's automatically closed it for us because browsers are helpful like that. So now let's try and inject some JavaScript. Simplest way to do that is to just use a simple script tag. An alert should pop up a box and it should say something like, XSS. Oh, but this didn't work. It's not executed for some reason. Hmm. Luckily, there are many different cross-site scripting payloads we can try. Let's have a look at this one. Hit enter one more time. If an alert box appears, you must confirm it in order to close it. Here we go. We've got this alert box popping up. OK. Congratulations, you just successfully performed a cross-site scripting attack. And this is DOM-based. It was your payload, the thing that you entered, was handled and improperly embedded by the application without even sending it to the server. 
Um, so here we can see an iframe in the source. We can see that the iframe had its own source as JavaScript alert cross site scripting. So then there's a question about why did this one work and not the simple script one? Could be that there's some um, validation going on in the search box where they say, well, if you try and enter a script tag, we're going to stop you. But they didn't check for things like having JavaScript within the source attribute of an iframe tag. And again, it kind of comes back to if at first you don't succeed, you can try a whole bunch of different things and see what payloads work. You can get lists of um, valid cross-site scripting or SQL injection payloads on the internet. You can get tools like Burp Suite or OWASP Zap to automatically fire them at inputs. Um, you should only ever run those tools at websites you're allowed to um, because that counts as real hacking and you don't want to go to jail. Um, anyway, back on the scoreboard, we can see that we have successfully performed a DOM-based cross-site scripting. And we get a nice tick. And now I'm going to turn it over to you. So thanks for watching the video. Um, I hope you have fun solving some of these other challenges. Remember there's the book to help guide you through if you need it. Um, and check out the OWASP Wellington meetup page. Um, once we're out of lockdown, join the group and you'll get notified about when we start our meetups again. We might even try something uh, virtual like this again. Um, thanks for listening. I hope you have a fun time with OWASP G-Shop. Kakite.